Getting a tracheostomy and being started on a ventilator can be a very scary experience. There is a new medical device you will need to know how to operate and new medical equipment you will need to know how to use. Although this experience may seem overwhelming, there are some tips and essential information which can help make this transition smoother. Join me this week as I share some techniques to help care for your tracheostomy and we'll discuss some information you will need to help troubleshoot in case a problem arises. Once you get a tracheostomy tube placed, you will most likely not be able to speak. The tracheostomy tube will cause irritation to your airways. This will cause your airways to swell and prevent you from being able to speak. To help with communication, I used an iPad when I first got my tracheostomy tube to help with responding to people's questions. It was also helpful to create a separate document which had certain words or phrases such as yes, no, thank you, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, etc. already written out. This was helpful to quickly communicate with people. I could simply point to the word or phrase and get my message across. You can also search online and print off various language boards which will have various phrases, activities, or requests already written on them. It took me nearly two weeks for my airways to adjust to have a tracheostomy tube in place. Although I could still not speak, I could now make noises such as laughter and grunting. I practiced every day to make different noises. I would try to make animal sounds, ba, moo, nay. I would also try to practice doing simple sounds such as ka, Ba, da. You will have to train your body to again make sounds and words. Please also note the procedure used to place the tracheostomy tube may damage your vocal cords. Sadly, there's a chance once you get a tracheostomy tube, you may lose the ability to speak. Your tracheostomy tube may be cuffed or uncuffed. A cuffed tracheostomy tube has a balloon which can be inflated or deflated to regulate the direction of the air flowing into and out of your lungs. If your cuff is inflated, this means all the air from your ventilator is being forced in and out your lungs. The cuff creates a seal in your trachea and prevents air from escaping from this closed circuit. If your cuff is deflated, it will act just like an uncuffed tracheostomy tube. This means some of the air going in and out of your lungs will flow up and out your nose and mouth. If you have a cuff, there are certain times you will want to deflate it. You will always deflate it when the tracheostomy tube needs to be exchanged. You will also need to have the cuff deflated if you wish to speak. Keeping the cuff inflated will, will prevent air from escaping up your airways and through your vocal cords. If air cannot pass through your vocal cords, you will not be able to speak. Also, it is very helpful if you deflate the cuff when you eat and drink. If you keep the cuff inflated, you will have a hard time swallowing. The inflated cuff will act like a balloon in your throat and food may become stuck in your esophagus or you may choke and the food or drink may go down into your airways. If you have a cuff on your tracheostomy tube, you will need to find out if the cuff is to be filled with air or water. The silicone bivona tracheostomy tubes use water. Most other tracheostomy tubes use air. Please ask your respiratory therapist or your durable medical equipment company what you should use to inflate your tracheostomy tube. To deflate your tracheostomy tube, you will need a clean syringe. I have found the best syringes to use are saline flushes. Simply empty out the saline and use the empty syringe. To deflate your tracheostomy tube cuff, you will want to attach it to the bottom of the tracheostomy tube. Inside here, there is a spring. So when you attach the, the syringe, you're gonna push down and activate the spring. To deflate the cuff, you will simply pull back on the syringe stopper. As you do this, the balloon on your tracheostomy tube will deflate. Once you can no longer pull back either the air or water, you're gonna detach the syringe by simply pulling it apart. You will see now 
that the, the balloon on the tracheostomy tube has been deflated. And also this external balloon is now flat. You can see there's no air or water inside. Now to inflate your tracheostomy tube, you're going to do the reverse procedure. First, you're going to see if there's uh, air or water inside your syringe. There should be approximately seven to eight milliliters of either air or water inside your syringe. Once you have the correct amount of air or water, you're going to again attach it to the bottom of the tracheostomy tube. Again, you're going to activate the spring by pushing down. And now you're going to push the stopper and inflate the tracheostomy tube. Once all the air or water is inside the tracheostomy tube, you're going to detach the syringe and your tracheostomy tube is now inflated. You can see the balloon is inflated and also this balloon right here is inflated. To check to see how much air or water is inside your tracheostomy tube, you're gonna push down on this external balloon. Now the balloon should not be rock hard, but it should also not be completely flat. As you can see, this one has a little bit of a spring to it, which means the tracheostomy tube has the perfect amount of air or water inside. When you first get a tracheostomy tube, your airways will produce a lot of mucus. You will need to keep your airways clear to prevent your tracheostomy tube from becoming plugged with mucus. One item which should be part of your tracheostomy tube is called an inner cannula. This piece of plastic will fit comfortably inside your tracheostomy tube. With this piece of plastic inside, the mucus will accumulate on the inside of the inner cannula. Once a day, you're going to want to replace the inner cannula. Ideally, you'll have more than one inner cannula. So when you want to replace the item, you can simply pop this out and put a fresh new inner cannula inside right away. To clean the inner cannula, you're going to simply pop this out of your tracheostomy tube. Next, you're going to have a glass container. Please use glass. You're going to put this inside the glass container. You're going to put a little bit of uh, fragrance-free dish soap as well as distilled water. Once you have fragrance-free dish soap and distilled water inside the glass container, you're going to gently swirl around the inner cannula. Once you've swirled this around a couple times to loosen up any mucus, you're going to allow this to sit for 15 to 20 minutes. After 15 to 20 minutes, you're going to carefully remove the inner cannula and you're going to rinse it off with distilled water. Now taking a separate new clean glass container, you're going to put one part hydrogen peroxide and one part distilled water. Once you have this inside, you're gonna carefully put your inner cannula inside and allow this to soak. The hydrogen peroxide will help disinfect the inner cannula. Ideally, you want this to soak for 24 hours. However, if you do not have another inner cannula to replace inside your tracheostomy tube and you need to replace this sooner, please allow this to soak for at least one hour. Once this has soaked and become disinfected, carefully remove the inner cannula and again, rinse this off with distilled water. If you're going to use this again right away, you can simply pop this right back inside your tracheostomy tube. However, if you're not gonna use this right away, take a clean, dry paper towel and allow this to air dry. Please remember anytime you touch the inner cannula to wash your hands. Also, anytime you're touching the inner cannula, please only touch it by the outside outer edges. Do not touch anything that's going to be going into your tracheostomy tube. This will help prevent infection. Another thing which can help get rid of mucus accumulation is called a suction machine. This machine uses a catheter and goes down into the airways and sucks up mucus. There are several different types of catheters which can be used. This type of catheter is called an open suction catheter. It can only be used once and then must be thrown away. I do not like these catheters because you must keep everything sterile when using it. You need to carefully put on sterile gloves. The tubing must be carefully connected to the suction machine. The catheter must be carefully lowered into the tracheostomy tube and then lowered into the airways. The risk for getting infection is extremely high. Moreover, it is stressful for the person on the ventilator because during this type of suctioning, the person is disconnected from the ventilator. Instead, use these catheters called inline or closed suction catheters. These catheters are all contained inside a plastic sleeve. The risk for getting an infection is very low. 
you attach the catheter to your ventilator hose and you can leave it there for five to seven days. At the end of five to seven days, you disconnect the catheter and throw it away. You then can replace it with a new catheter. This is how the inline suction catheter looks. You're going to attach this end, which is where the catheter is going to come out. This is gonna be attached directly to your tracheostomy tube and this area that's uh, extending is gonna be attached to your ventilator hose. One thing to note is when you're attaching this, if you have any sort of connecting flexible area like this that I have on my tracheostomy tube, this is going to have to be re uh, removed because it's not going to work with the inline suction catheter. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. First of all, you're gonna disconnect the ventilator. Then you're gonna attach this to your tracheostomy. Remove this and then attach. And just like that, you have it attached. And this can stay on the uh, inline suction for five to seven days. This also has a cap at the end. If you want to suction, you take off this cap and you attach it to the end of your suction machine. And now you're ready to suction. If you're not going to be suctioning, you're gonna to want to disconnect the suction machine. And then you're going to replace it with this cap once you have this, you're free to go about your regular daily life and you can leave this in place for five to seven days. Now, if you're at the hospital and getting ready to be discharged, you can ask your respiratory therapist or perhaps the nurse to attach one of these before going home. It'll make the process of going home much easier and smoother. Also, if you're at home and you're unsure how to connect this, when your respiratory therapist visits you, ask him or her if they could attach this to your line. This way you have it attached. And after five to seven days, you can easily see how this is configured and then replace it yourself. When suctioning, please do not shove this entire catheter into the airways. This will damage the lungs. When you're ready to suction, attach this end to the suction machine. Next, turn on the suction machine. Now carefully insert the catheter into the person's lungs. Please only insert this until you start feeling resistance. Once you start feeling resistance, the person will probably start coughing. When this happens, press down on this lever and this will activate the suction throughout the catheter and now start pulling back. As you pull back, you should begin to feel and see mucus coming through the tubing. There are numbers on this tubing you will see there's 16, 18, 20. Whenever you're doing the suctioning, make a note of what number it is that the person starts uh, coughing or starts feeling resistance. Now, if you know at 18, the person starts coughing and you feel resistance, try only going to 16. This will help prevent the airways from becoming scarred and from causing damage. Most of the time when you're doing the suctioning, the mucus will only be in the tracheostomy tube, so you won't have to go very far. If this is the case, perhaps only go to about 14, and you shove it into about 14, and now you're gonna pull this back. And you're gonna do this uh, several times to try to get out the mucus from the tracheostomy tube. You can go down a little bit lower, but again, make note of where the person starts coughing or where you feel resistance and try to avoid that number, try to go less than that. How much you suction will depend on how much mucus is in the airways. Some medical professionals suggest suctioning every four to six hours. You can use this as a guide. However, you will figure out over time what is the best approach to suctioning. Generally, it is best to suction when you first wake up and before going to bed. Also, mucus buildup will cause the airways to become noisy. It will sound as though the person is snoring. If you notice a change in the sound of the person's breathing, try suctioning to see if that helps return the breathing back to normal. On the ventilator, there will be information displayed on the machine's homepage. It is helpful to get acquainted with these numbers. The first number is pressure. This number will change from a low number when exhaling to a high number when the vent is giving an inhalation breath. The exhalation pressure should be preset on the machine. Mine is set to six. The pressure given at inhalation may vary. In general, it should be between eight and 30. 
if the inhalation pressure number is less than 8 or more than 30, there's probably an issue which needs to be resolved. Underneath the pressure is another number called PIP. PIP stands for Peak Inspiratory Pressure. This number is the maximum pressure the person is receiving for each inhalation breath. This is the same information given under the pressure, but is easier to read. Again, the peak inspiratory pressure should be between 8 and 30. Next to pressure is RR. RR stands for respiration rate. The machine should be preset with a minimum respiratory rate. So in general, you do not have to worry about the respiratory rate going too low. However, you do need to be aware if the respiratory rate goes too high. If the respiratory rate goes into the 20s or higher, there is something wrong. This may indicate an infection, a blocked airway, or an issue with the ventilation equipment. Next to RR is VTE. VTE stands for Volume Total Exhaled. This measures the volume of air you exhale. VTE should equal the tidal volume set on your machine. The tidal volume on my machine is set to 530. The VTE will vary from around 50 milliliters below your set tidal volume to 50 milliliters above the tidal volume. For me, this means my VTE should vary from around 480 milliliters to 580 milliliters. If the VTE is consistently less than 50 milliliters of your set tidal volume, there is an issue with the ventilator. Please also note, if you have the cuff deflated, the VTE will dramatically drop. This is normal. The number next to VTE is leak. Leak measures the amount of air leaking from your tubing. You will need to have a leak in your tubing because you need to allow the exhalation valve to get rid of carbon dioxide. In general, the leak should be between 15 and 35. If the leak is less than 15, the tubing is retaining too much carbon dioxide. If the leak is more than 35, the tubing may be cracked or defective. Please also note, if you have a, your cuff deflated, your leak will increase because air is escaping up your air airways and exiting your body via your nose and mouth. There are other numbers on your ventilator. Although these numbers provide useful information for medical professionals, they are not essential for basic understanding and operation of the ventilator. Problems associated with the ventilator are often quite noticeable. Most of the time, the person on the ventilator will become short of breath. You may also notice the person is agitated, the chest may rise and fall rapidly, or the person may be restless. If you notice any of these symptoms, please immediately check the ventilator screen and start looking at the various numbers displayed on the home screen. The first thing to look at is the respiration rate. If the respirations are over 20 breaths per minute, the person is short of breath. You need to act quickly to get the person's breathing back to normal. If you feel the person is in extreme distress, do not try to figure out the problem, but immediately go to the emergency department and get help. If you see the peak inspiratory pressure on the screen is below 8, this indicates there is a hole in the ventilation circuit. If the hole in the circuit is large, the number displayed under the leak should also be larger than normal. For example, if the leak is normally 25, if the leak is large, the leak may be 35, 45, or even 50. A large leak can be something as simple as the cuff is deflated on the trach tube. To fix this, simply inflate the cuff. A large leak could also mean there's something wrong with the circuit. Whether the leak is large or normal, check over the tubing to make sure everything is connected. If you have a heated wire circuit on your tubing, make sure all these wires are connected and plugged into the air hose. Also make sure there are any cracks or leaks in the tubing 
simply feel with your hand and if you feel any any air rushing out you know there's a crack also check your water chamber make sure the tubing is connected properly to the water chamber and also check for any leaks or cracks in the water chamber if you cannot see anything visibly wrong with the circuit it could mean the exhalation valve is defective or the tubing is cracked to fix this you will need to connect a new tubing circuit if you have checked everything out and you still cannot see what's wrong with the ventilation circuit, call your respiratory therapist or your durable medical equipment company. They should be able to help troubleshoot with you and figure out where the issue is. If you see on the screen that the peak inspiratory pressure is high, this means something is obstructing airflow into the lungs. The most common cause of this is mucus in the airways. If you have an inner cannula, remove it from the tracheostomy tube. If removing the inner cannula does not alleviate the high positive inspiratory pressure, the mucus may be lower down in the airways. To remove mucus from the airways, use a suction machine. If these methods fail, it could mean the airways are swollen from an infection, there is a large mucus plug, or some other serious medical issue may be happening. If this is the case, please seek immediate medical attention. If the VTE is low, this means there's a hole in the ventilation circuit. The volume total exhaled will vary if the person moves, so do not be alarmed if it fluctuates from moment to moment. For the VTE to be considered low, it should remain at a low value consistently for several minutes. For example, if the VTE is normally 500, a low VTE would be a value of 450 or less for three to five minutes. If the VTE drops for only a few moments, do not be alarmed, this is normal. If the VTE is low for several minutes, this means there's a hole in the ventilation circuit. Check the circuit for leaks. Make sure if you have a heated wire circuit, these wires are carefully inserted into the holes. Check to make sure that the water chamber does not have any leaks. Also just check to make sure that the tubing does not have any holes or leaks. Make sure also that the cuff is inflated. A deflated cuff will cause the VTE to significantly drop. If you cannot find anything wrong, you may need to replace the tubing. If you have changed out the tubing and the VTE is still low, call your respiratory therapist or your durable medical equipment company. They may be able to help troubleshoot with you. If at any time the person on the ventilator has a significant and rapid change in his breathing pattern or appears to be in a lot of distress, immediately go to the nearest emergency department. The person may need to be switched over to a hospital ventilator until the issue with the home ventilator can be figured out. I hope this information helps guide you as you learn how to live with your medical equipment. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.